If you've seen my videos on map design, you know I like Flounder Heights, and I think this is a good stage. However, I have not talked about why I consider it the actual best stage, and today, I'm gonna go over it. So let's just, let's go! First thing, Flounder Heights has the best spawn region of any stage. It is a very small point, but I think it is worth noting. So, this little red circle is where the spawn pad always is on Flounder. Notice the amount of room you have. Some map modes, mainly Rainmaker, you can get up here, but even then it's still kind of awkward. I kind of wish you couldn't get like past this area here, but whatever, that's my minor nitpick. But for most situations, this entire side is only accessible to you. This drop is only accessible to you, and there's this entire right alley that leads to two separate drops that's only accessible to you, and then of course there's this giant area. You get plenty of room to move. You can literally go to the farthest sides of the stage from spawn. There's so many places to drop into. This area as well, this core and snipe area, are also very, very easy to get control over. And that's where you want to set up like your backline and stuff. So it's really easy for the team to respawn, set up, and defend. It is the stage that has the best spawn area for that reason. I feel like this is a pretty simple one that people aren't really going to argue with me over, so I just wanted to get it out of the way. Number two. Movement options. It's another one I talked about in my maps video, but Flounder Heights has the most movement options of any stage. Like, just where you can move along the map. There is this left side you can climb up. There is this middle area you can go to. There's this ramp you can come from. You can climb this wall. You can climb the side of this wall. You can climb this wall. You can go around this back end flank, climb either of these walls, climb the back of it. You can climb this wall. You can climb up here, climb over here. You can climb over here, climb here, climb all the way over here. Climb here, go out all the way over here and climb up the stage. Like it is not contested. Vertical stages like Mori have a problem because getting up ledges and approaching people is generally awkward and a bad thing. So Flounder Heights gets around this problem by having so many goddamn approach options. If you can't get into mid, it's genuinely your fault. Like, there is no limitation on this map as to where you can go. If you can't find a way to go in with all these climbable walls and a bunch of ramps and areas to move in, it's on you. This stage allows you to move in and allows really creative pushes. Like, you can have a team flank this right side, paint the wall, and take control of this high ground over here. You can have someone flank through middle while people push left. There's so many options. And you know, on top of that, your backline can get set up over here and still affect people in mid. It's crazy. I, again, if I'm going to be nitpicky, the wall paint could be a little bit annoying. Maybe use the single player boost panels, especially in Splatoon 1 when wall paint was bad, but whatever. Weapon diversity. I'm going to try to go over every class, including in Splatoon 2's, and tell you why they're all somewhat decent here. Shooters? They're not bad anywhere. I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on shooters. Obviously, short range shooters are pretty solid here. Long range shooters are solid. Whatever. No one really cares a bunch about shooters. Brushes. If we're adding Splatoon 2 mechanics, being able to roll across the uninkables on the top here is really useful. Over here, and over here, and also the grades for this flank route. So brushes inherently have a nice advantage on this map. Buckets. Guess what? The stage is based on verticality. Pretty much every bucket's going to be really good here, except for maybe Blob. But even then, like, you can bounce Blobs down here, or underneath. Like, Blob setup would be really annoying here. So, Sloshers, plenty good. Splatlings. This stage has a lot of both grades, which is actually pretty insane. Like a spot lane going over here and pushing this area can be decently threatening if you don't have someone set up back here. But you know, they can also go on top of that inkable wall. Spotting's a pretty good spot. Chargers can go over here and still pressure middle. Chargers can go over here and still pressure some areas. It's still pretty, not exactly flat along the top, but there's still a lot of areas. Charger sideline has plenty of pressure. People say chargers are bad here and it's not a strong charger stage. I'll give you that. It's not a weak one either. Blasters obviously get a lot of angles to take advantage of, but they also struggle to paint the walls to move on this map, so I think that's also a pretty nice small detail about it. But yeah, obviously blasters are going to be pretty good for the same reasons buckets are. Uh, I'm going to be honest, as umbrellas are probably the weakest class on the stage, just because there's a lot of ways to get around them. But even then, I think like umbrella pushing this trench area or taking fights on people on this low ground down here could be advantageous to it. Or just playing on top of the wall could still be pretty useful, since it's an uninkable. Also, 10 shield across here because of the grading could be really cool. So, umbrellas would still not be horrible there. Duelies? Eh, duelies are just kind of like shooters, but the rolls could still be very useful across a lot of these. Okay, I don't want to spend forever on here. Obviously, every weapon class is pretty solid here. Oh yeah, very good point. Squid Surge and Roll would be very useful on this stage. Like, being able to Squid Surge off of all these different vert walls, like... That makes these even more, like, insane of an option. So yeah, Squid Surge definitely just elevates the f*** out of the stage. Let's go with the stage gimmick, I guess. The stage gimmick here is verticality. I know Mori also does it, and Mori definitely has more of a sense of scale, like, going all the way up and down. But I'm sorry, this is verticality just done 50 times better. Like, the stage being more elevated in certain areas, like, in front and behind. 
And even the trench area down here is fairly big. Like, this is bigger than Muscle Forge's trench area. And Muscle Forge is much more important of a trench area than this is. So I like that the area that is stuck on low ground does still have a good amount of movement. And even is kind of covered better in some situations. So, you know, I'll give it props for that. My critique of the stage is f***ing Rainmaker. I mentioned it before, but Rainmaker gets you, lets you go up here. It's still generally one path. I mean, it's not as bad as Inkblot, but you can't go anywhere over here, so Rainmaker's a bit linear. And the pedestal is very close to your spawn and also very fast to get to from mid. So yes, Rainmaker is a genuine problem. I don't think Rainmaker is good on this map. That being said, I think it's really hard to have a map that's good on all modes. And while originally this was something that I used to dock points for and why I would say Mahi I think is slightly better, if I'm really going to be fair, I don't think it's really the most reasonable thing to be like, yeah, this stage is bad on Rainmaker, and therefore it's not a good stage, when it's good literally everywhere else and, like, almost every other metric imaginable. It's just not fair. Uh, people bring up tower control for those who don't know the tower path. You basically go over here, you go above this wall, you go down here, over here, and then all the way over here. I do not have a problem with TC on this. I think checkpoints could make this better, but I don't have an issue with it. I don't know why people think TC is bad here. Like, it does go into this trench area, but, like... You can flank the tower over here, you can go over here, you can try to take mid in which the tower is absolutely screwed if you lose top mid. Defensively, you get to be set up pretty cool here, but jumping on tower is committal. Like, yeah, the defending team can play top mid a ton and, like, try to hold top mid, but even then, as we've established, that's not really a big problem with the stage. There's a ton of ways to get in. And if you stand up here and try to go all the way to the tower and back up, is just not happening. So, I mean, honestly, I think TC works fairly well for this stage. Like, I know people have their problems with it, but I think it actually works fine. Good bit of risk-reward. And mainly the good way to defend on TC on this is to, well, go take key positions like mid and such. Take advantage of moving into mid with the movement options that you have and how open the stage is. So honestly, it promotes really smart gameplay. If you really tunnel on the tower, yeah, this might be hell to have a tower in this trench here and just drop from up here. But if you're only pushing the tower by dropping off this ledge, you're kind of just ignoring the entire left and right side of the stage. On you there. I think... The new mechanics and weapon classes that they've introduced would be good here. Stages a ton of movement options. Open spawn area is great on two of the modes. It just works, dude. To add a speculative note, I think the stage would also work pretty well in Clan Blitz. Having the barrier on that bottom left side would work pretty well, and you wouldn't be able to score from super far away. Or you could potentially even have it where the Rainmaker pedestal is, though that could be a bit too stacked in the defender's side. Either way, I think the map could work for other modes pretty easily with only small tweaks. It's really just Rainmaker where it's really hard to make it work since you really are only coming from one direction and the map is somewhat small. That, that's it. That's the analysis.